let me just start off by saying that if there's any debate about whether there are rules of professional conduct and responsibility to apply to all of us in this courtroom, I'm happy to send the jury home for the rest of the day, and we can go through all of them, including the administrative order, which adopts all of them in this circuit. I don't. I hope that that's not necessary, but if that is necessary, I'm happy to do it. What brings us to this situation is the argument that ensued about the refreshing of recollection, which is something that is essentially taught in the first year of law school, and debating over the semantics of it, and then sniping at each other and talking over each other, which is just going to end. It's not going to happen anymore, okay? Because if it continues, I'll simply declare, declare a mistrial. That's what I'm going to do. That's my warning that we all need to be professional. We all need to be careful. Okay? It came up that perhaps the jury can hear what I'm saying from over here because I talk loud sometimes. I'm not yelling, but I do talk loud. And I don't know that that white noise is sufficient. In fact, I'm told that if defense counsel can hear it, that perhaps the jury can hear the discussions at the bench. So there's a fix for that, too. We can send the jury out every time there's a need to approach, and we'll eliminate any possibility of the jury overhearing what we're discussing at the bench. What also adds to the problem is the number of people that approach the bench who some may be talking to me, some may be talking to each other, some may be talking to other people, and it creates a problem. So, also pursuant to the administrative order, I have the ability to impose additional rules in the courtroom that may address responsibility and professionalism of attorneys. And so I am going to announce a rule that we are going to follow from this point forward. Only one representative from each side will be permitted to approach the bench. If that person requests an opportunity to go back to the table to discuss with someone else, I will allow it. But we're only going to have one person at the bench at a time from this point forward. Now, we're going to go back to the witness that was on the stand and the refreshing of recollection. And I am going to allow the state to identify whatever the object is. That was his question. That's what brought us to this. He asked, when the state asked whether his recollection was refreshed, whether that was a transcript of the recording. And I'm going to ask you all first to tell me if you agree that it is or it is not. That's something very simple that the attorneys outside the presence of the jury can make a determination on. It either is or it isn't. So I'll start with Ms. Hodges. Ms. Hodges, is what you were using to refresh the witness's recollection a recording or a transcript of his recorded interview? It is, Judge. At the top, it's titled Transcribed Interview with the date of October 8, 2012. The location, interview of, and then who conducted the interview. And then it has line by line the interview. And I understand that, but despite the, the, that, there's some confusion because there was two interviews that appear to have been made simultaneously, and it's created some confusion. The defense did a, brought that out on cross. I think the witness was confused as well whether that's something that the detective wrote up after he talked to him and then recorded him. It appears, and you all may know better than me and correct me if I'm wrong, that the detective talked to him, asked him some questions, and then said, okay, I'm going to interview you, um, I'm going to record you, and then re-interviewed him and recorded him basically the same, I don't know, I wasn't there, but essentially about the same incident and now it was being recorded. So now there's this air of confusion as to whether that is in fact the statement that was made while being recorded or it's the statement he made right before he was recorded and was somehow written down or, or somehow recreated by the detective. It sounds like, and I'll give the defense an opportunity to agree or disagree, because I'm sure you got a copy of the recording, an audio of the recording, and then can look at the transcript and agree or disagree as to whether that item that they've used is in fact the transcript of the report of the recording. So I'll turn to the defense. What's your position? Is that the transcript? It is what they purport to be a transcript. It's not certified, so I'm not wiggling here, but it is the transcript that came with the audio. Okay, did you listen to the audio? Yes. Do you have, have any reason to believe that what's on the transcript is different than what's on the audio? 
I'm not going to say with 100% accuracy. Obviously, as the court knows, these are not certified transcripts, but I don't know of any substantive... Because certainly Correct. in your preparation of this case, right. if you had looked at the transcript and listened to the audio, yes. we'd hear about it, wouldn't we? Correct. If Absolutely. We, if there was something that was in there purported to have been said or not said, and it was substantively different, absolutely. Right. So that, so I think the court's clear on what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's 100% accurate. I understand. I understand. Right. So that is why when we bring the witness in, I am going to allow Ms. Hodges to identify that as a transcript of the recorded part of the interview. And then ask him again, because he hasn't answered yet. Technically, whether his memory was refreshed because he responded with a question. Is that the transcript of the recording? Right. So we're going to go right back to that spot. He's going to be told that, yes, it is. And then he's going to be asked if his memory is refreshed. If he answers his memory is refreshed, then I will allow the state to ask the question again, which is something about a cane, whether he saw him using a cane. And then we're going to we're going to move on. OK, I am not going to allow a cross examination, recross examination of the item that was used to refresh recollection. I've never seen that. I've never had anybody request that. And I'm not going to allow it today. Gotcha. Can I put uh, argument on the record? You can. Yes. You may. All right. So when a witness testifies at a trial, I'm citing to Earhart. Yes. Not so fast. You're reading and, and the court reporter can't take down when you read fast. Yes, sorry, I'm trying to be better with our time. Thank you. Uh, when a witness testifies at a trial that a certain fact or event occurs, it is improper to show that witness a writing under the guise of refreshing recollection because the testimony of the witness is based on a present memory. Here's the problem with that. When he is given a transcript, okay, that he does not know, all right? I'm not taking an issue with what it is, but he does not know what it is of himself. He's just being told what it is, right? And so now he's going to look at something, and the question is going to be whether, in fact, he has a present memory or whether he's just going to regurgitate something ascribed to him in a transcript that he's never seen, that he's never compared. So he may feel like, I just have to say, yes, my memory is refreshed. Whatever is in that transcript is okay. The memory of a witness does not need to be refreshed in that situation. Well, but there's no question that his answer on cross-examination by you was, I don't remember. You And you made it a point. To, it's not that you're not saying it didn't happen. You're saying you simply don't remember, which is what opens the door wide to, to refresh, refreshing a witness's recollection. But now if we're going to dive into whether or not when a witness says my memory has been refreshed, they're actually being truthful on that or not, that's... You know, I mean, that's why I'm requiring the question, which which I agreed with your objection. Um, and Ms. Hodges said, well, I asked him to look up when it was refreshed. No, I, I'm not going to accept that. I want him asked the direct question, did that transcript or did that item that you read refresh your recollection? And if he answers yes, it did, I'm going to allow them to ask the question again. I have no idea what his answer is going to be. We haven't gotten that far. But I think it satisfies the procedure. And I'm, I'm going to allow that, and then we'll see where it goes. But if we continue to debate first-year law school things like refreshing recollection, I don't know where this trial is going to go and when and how it's going to end. And if they have the opportunity to do this again, then who knows? They might have fabric experts testify the next time. So I'm just simply saying, you know, let's try to get through this trial um, – and, and let's be professional about it, please. I, I understand where you're going. I, I need to finish putting the law on the record. Go because, ahead. Because I think the court is saying this, but I want to be clear. If a, memory, uh, if a witness's memory is jogged and the testimony is based on an independent recollection, it is immaterial what is used. That was what we said at the bench, that anything can be used to refresh recollection. Exactly. That's the rule. But, right. But... Usually, we have an ability to 
to challenge that, right? And I understand you're not giving me recross on that point to ask him whether in fact that is actually your present memory or whether you're just repeating what you see on a piece of paper. In the end, I agree with you, Judge. We're belaboring a point because here's the deal. The witness has testified on direct examination that he used a cane. He couldn't remember. And I cross-examined and elaborated on that point. He used a cane. Now, apparently, they're refreshing or impeaching as to whether he had a limp or not. So I, I Exactly my point. It, gotcha. I, I don't know. I'm not going to comment on the evidence or I the... But do we really need to get into this over something like this is... And I'm not in any way suggesting the no, defense should not do their job and, and, and do it to the best of their abilities. But let's let's get through this refreshing right. and let's move on. It's going to be um, 11 o'clock when we get in and get going. And my plan is to go until I've got a meeting at 12. So I've got a break at 12. 